The tragic tale you're going to hear is based on the terrifying actual account of a young college student who was stalked by wolves in freezing Canadian wilderness and killed by them. Click the like and subscribe buttons right now. This was Kenton's scary wolf assault. Mr. Joel Carnegie. Kenton Joel Carnegie, then 22 years old, was studying geological engineering at the University of Waterloo in Ontario, Canada, reaching the conclusion of his semester on November 8, 2005. In the northeastern Saskatchewan region, a corporation named Point North Landing had given him an internship. And he was thrilled to have the chance to start his career at such a prestigious organization. However, the uranium mine was practically in the middle of nowhere and was more than 900 miles, 1500 chem, away from his college. The closest city was more than two hours distant and hundreds of miles of wilderness and animals surrounding it. The region was home to a variety of physical characteristics, including lakes, rivers, dense woods, and in the winter, snowy plains. Additionally, it was home to animals like black bears, lynx, moose, and timber wolves. The dominant predators in this cold wilderness were all there. For the duration of his internship, Kenton settled down in one of the camps close to the other miners after arriving at the facility. He loved the outdoors and sometimes yearned to go farther into the woods to explore and enjoy some alone apart from the camp community. He was granted permission by his superiors to take a stroll outside the plant's perimeter for a few days, but he was cautioned about going too far into the woods. On November 8th, around 5.30 p.m., Kenton departed the factory after being given permission to take a stroll around the neighborhood. He promised one of his fellow campers that he would return by 7 o'clock, just in time for dinner. It was becoming dark, and the sun was sinking. Kenton made the decision to go a half mile to a local lake, and before returning to the camp, take in the sunset by the water. He stayed for a while there before leaving just in time to walk back while it was still light outside, taking in the dense woodland ahead of him and the accumulating snow that made it hard to move. Kenton started moving in the direction of the camp. It was challenging to walk, and in order to make up for his sluggish speed, he was compelled to take longer strides. He came to a startling discovery about this time. He thought he could hear something pursuing him. He sensed that someone was watching him from amid the towering, frozen trees. Looking behind him, Kenton saw a lone wolf. He stood a few yards away and gave it a quick glance, attempting to determine what it was up to. He opted to keep going in the hopes that the wolf would leave, since it did not seem to be immediately dangerous. Kenton moved his attention back to the front and saw another wolf standing there. He no longer felt as tranquil as previously since he felt confined. His breathing became more rapid as he became aware that the sky was becoming dimmer by the second. He was being surrounded by wolves in a cynical and planned manner. Later footsteps revealed that Kenton had been being followed ever since he had left the camp. Now that panic had begun to take hold, coupled with the pressing need for time, Kenton Joel acted contrary to what he ought to have done, given the circumstances. He began to run. The two wolves were encouraged to begin following him by his accelerated pace. Kenton became more realistic about the intentions of the woodland predator with whom he was now engaged in a pursuit. Still one kilometer from safety, Kenton screamed in terror as two more wolves joined the pack and followed him. It was hard for him to outpace the predators that were engaged in combat on their own territory due to the adrenaline, fear, and the heavy snow under his boots, and four to one in his favor. Finally, one wolf got a hold of him and bit the side of his torso to draw the first blood. As Kenton began to bleed, a trail of bloodstains appeared behind him on the white snow. He was now battling for his life after no one responded to his calls for assistance. In an effort to thwart his attempt to flee, the wolves closed in on him and bit him again on the thigh. Finally, 
he sank to his knees while still attempting to escape danger by crawling. Kenton was frightened as the wolves began around him in an insane manner. He began to punch and fend off one of the wolves as it sprang at him in his last moments. Kenton's destiny was all but decided when the whole pack pounced on him all at once during the excitement of a successful hunt. One of the wolves bit into his thigh with its razor-sharp fangs. His right hand was bit by the other. Having briefly escaped their grasp, Kenton was able to take a few steps forward in an effort to reach safety, as shown by the footprints that were subsequently found. But he was soon apprehended once more. His limbs had become numb with terror, and he was now gasping for air. The wolves were not kind to him this time. They chewed off pieces of his flesh from all over his body till he eventually stopped moving and perished. His campmates waited for him to return at the facility. At 7.30, they were worried for his safety after waiting for him to return for a half hour. In their pickup truck, a group of workers made the decision to search for Kenton in the forest. It was not unusual for wolves to be seen in the region, but when they discovered that Kenton's tracks in the snow were followed by wolf paw prints, they began to worry that a wolf assault could have occurred. To get a firearm, they returned to the factory. Not far from the plant grounds, they saw a black splotch on the white snow road ahead before resuming their search for Kenton. They moved closer to it to get a better look as it was now dark. They came to the conclusion that it was a heap of bloody clothing containing a crumpled and mutilated human corpse. What had transpired was now obvious. A mass of bones and flesh was scooped up by the factory employees. It was then placed into the vehicle. One of the truckers saw two pairs of blazing eyes in the distance behind the woods as he was going back into the vehicle. As they were returning, they heard wolf howls in the distance, which confirmed their concerns that the assault had been carried out. Investigations made in the wake of the assault by woodland wolves found that the inappropriate food disposal technique being employed at the location caused the wolves to get dangerously near to the plant premises. Food wrappers, leftovers, and food scraps had been placed in metal containers outside the structure, attracting the interest of wolves in the area. The University of Waterloo administration and Kenton's family established a memorial scholarship in his honor and wanted that no parent would ever again have to see this terrible tragedy. A savage band of man-eating wolves transporting a helpless victim to their demise.